So let's take a look at hydrostatic force problems. Now the formula for the hydrostatic force is going to be equal to the weight density times the integral from A to B of the height equation in terms of y times the width equation in terms of y, dy. And so the weight density depends on what measurements you're using for the force problems. Now if you're calculating force using meters, then the weight density you will use is going to be 9,800 newtons per cubic meters. And if you're trying to calculate force using feet instead of meters, then the weight density you will use is around 62.5 pounds per cubic feet. Now some problems say the weight density when you're using feet is 62.4, others say 62.5. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on the problem. And in this video, I'll just be using 62.5 as the weight density. And also keep in mind that since it's hydrostatic force, these densities are for water and not for any other substance. So looking at number one, a vertical plate is submerged in water and has the indicated shape. Find the hydrostatic force against the end of the plate. So we have a rectangle here with a width of six feet and a height of four feet and plus an extra two feet. So it is submerged two feet underwater. So once again, the formula for the hydrostatic force is going to be equal to the weight density times the integral from A to B of the height equation in terms of Y times the width equation in terms of Y, dy. And so notice since we're using feet here, the weight density that we will use is 62.5 pounds per cubic feet. And so we need the integral. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I'll draw this in a coordinate plane. So if I draw the x-axis right here, and the y-axis. And so the bounds we are going to use, the a and b bounds, are going to be the bounds of the plate. So notice the plate goes from negative 2 all the way down 4 units to negative 6. So our integration bounds, our a bound is negative 6 and we're going from negative 6 to negative 2. Now for our height equation, we're, notice we're always going to be going down a y distance but it's going to be below the x-axis. So our height equation is simply just negative y. Since we're going in the y direction but below the x-axis towards in the negative direction. So we're going to use a negative y as our height equation. And now for the width equation, notice since this is a rectangle, the width is always going to be constant 6 feet. So our width equation is just going to be 6. And so if I were to simplify this, we get negative 6y. So the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of negative 6y dy is going to be negative 6y squared over 2, or negative 3y squared. And we're going to evaluate from negative 6 to negative 2. So when I go ahead and plug in negative 2 first, we'll get negative 3 times negative 2 squared, or negative 3 times 4, which is negative 12, minus when I plug in negative 6, which will be 36 times negative 3, or negative 108. So if I have a minus a negative, and a plus 108. And so negative 12 plus 108 gives me 96. And don't forget, we do have 62.5, the constant outside of the integral, or our weight density. So I'll multiply by 62.5. And when you multiply, you should get exactly 6,000 pounds of force acting on the rectangular plate. And so for number two, we have a half circle with a diameter of 20 meters and the top of the tank is going to be exactly at water level. And so if I were to use a coordinate plane once again, this will be the x-axis. We have the y-axis here. And so if I were to write the force equation or the hydrostatic force equation, notice we're in meters now, so we have to use the other weight density constant of 9,800 newtons per cubic meters. And so for our bounds of integration, once again, we're just going to integrate the tank, or the bounds of the tank. So notice if the diameter is 20, then the radius is going to be 10 meters. And so we're basically going to go from negative 10 to 0. Those are our y bounds. For the height equation in terms of y, obviously we're going a vertical distance of y, 
but below the x-axis. So it's going to be negative y. And now for the width equation, notice it's not always constant. So down here is not the same width as up here, because up here we have a longer width. Now remember the equation of a half circle is going to be the square root of a squared minus x squared in terms of x. So the a is obviously going to be the radius. So if we were to use the radius here, well obviously that's 20 meters of diameter, but the radius is 10. So we get the square root of 10 squared over or 100 minus x squared. But since we're integrating with respect to y, then we must change the variable to y. So we get the square root of 100 minus y squared. Now if I were to draw this same vertical plate here in another coordinate plane, so let's go ahead and draw it right here. This, would, this is the circle, or this is the half circle of the equation 100 minus square root of 100 minus x squared. Now if we were to graph square root of 100 minus y squared, the graph would look something like this, where we have a half circle, but a vertical half circle, rather than a horizontal one. And so the width of this half circle, depending on the y value, is only going to give us half of what we need. So in order to get the other half, we just need to double it. So instead of square root of 100 minus y squared, we're going to have 2 times the square root of 100 minus y squared. And once again, we're still going to integrate from negative 10, the y bounds of negative 10 to 0. And so for the width equation, we're going to multiply by 2 times the square root of 100 minus y squared. And obviously we need dy. And so if I were to rewrite this integral here, the 2 can obviously go outside because it's a constant, and I can also bring the negative out. So the force is going to be equal to negative 19,600 times the integral from negative 10 to 0 of y times the square root of 100 minus y squared. And to evaluate this integral, we can just use simple u substitution. So if u is equal to 100 minus y squared, then du is going to equal to negative 2y dy, which means dy is going to be equal to du over negative 2y. So to substitute here, we get the integral from negative 10 to 0. Now obviously 100 minus y squared is our u, and we're going to substitute in dy, which is equal to du over negative 2y. So we get y times the square root of u times dy, which is du over negative 2y. Notice the y's will cancel, and a negative 1 half can come outside the integral. So we get negative 1 half times the integral from negative 10 to 0 of the square root of u du or u to the 1 half du. So now we can use the power rule and the integral of u to the 1 half is simply just 2 thirds u to the 3 halves multiplied by that outside constant of negative 1 half. So then we get negative 2 over 6 or negative 1 third u to the 3 halves. And our u, once again, is 100 minus u squared. So I'll rewrite that up here. Negative 1 third times 100, sorry, not 100 minus u squared, 100 minus y squared, all to the 3 halves. And don't forget, we also have the negative 19,600 out front. So we also multiply by that number. And so before I evaluate, I'll actually multiply the negative 19,600 and the negative 1 third. So we'll get positive 19,600 over 3 times negative 1 third. Sorry, not negative 1 third. We already multiplied that. We get 100 minus y squared to the 3 halves. We're going to evaluate that. Remember, our bounds are from negative 10 to 0. And so when I evaluate, I plug in 0. And so we'll get 19,600 over 3 times so when I plug in 0, I'll get 100 to the 3 halves, or simply 1,000, minus when I plug in negative 10, 100 minus 100 is 0, 0 to the 3 halves is 0. So then we'll end up getting 19,600 times 1,000 over 3, or 19,600, and I add 3 more zeros, 
over 3. And so the exact answer is 19,600,000 over 3. And our units for this is newtons of force. And so now for number 3, we basically have a trapezoid. The top base is 12 feet long, bottom base is 20 feet long, and the height is 8 feet. And the top of the tank is on the water level. So if I were to write out the formula here for the force, we get the weight density once again. So since we're using feet, the weight density we're going to use, or the constant for the weight density we're going to use is 62.5 pounds per cubic feet times the integral. Now our bounds here, once again, if I draw the coordinate plane, now we are going from basically from negative 8 to 0 since our height is 8 feet. So those are going to be our bounds. So we're going from negative 8 to 0. Now our height equation obviously is going to be negative y because we're traveling a y distance below the x-axis. So it's going to be negative y. And for our width equation, now the width varies depending on the y value. So the width is not always the same on the bottom as it is on the top of the tank. But what I can do here is create a line that matches with the side of the trapezoid. And so if we figure out what the equation of this line is, we can use that as our width equation. Now in order to find the slope of this line, we can just take two points. So we know what these two points are, because this top one here is simply 6, 0. Because the, since the top of the base is 12 feet long, but we need half of it, so 6. And for the bottom base is going to be the bottom base is 20 feet long, but we need half of it, so it's going to be 10, negative 8, since the height is 8 feet. So we can simply do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so negative 8 minus 0 over 10 minus 6, so we'll get negative 8 over 4, or negative 2. And so that is going to be the slope of the line. And so we can use point slope form, so y minus, whichever point we can pick either one, but in this case, negative 6, 0 is the easier one to use. So y1 is 0. So y minus y1 equals the slope, negative 2, times x minus the x1 coordinate, which is 6. And so notice we need to integrate in terms of y. So we need to isolate x. So if I go ahead, y minus 0 is obviously y, and we can divide over negative 2. So we get negative one half y plus six equals x. And so that will be our equation. But this line only gives the distance of half of it. So we need the full distance, so we can just multiply by two. So we'll get x equals, now negative one half times two is negative one, so we get negative y plus 12. And so that will be our width equation here. Or in other words, I can rewrite it as 12 minus y, dy. So if I go ahead and distribute the negative y and rearrange the terms, we'll get the integral from negative 8 to 0 of y squared minus 12y. And so to integrate y squared, obviously just a y cubed over 3. And to integrate negative 12y, we just have negative 6y squared. And we're going to go from negative 8 to 0. So when I plug in 0, we'll obviously get 0. And so minus when I plug in negative 8. And so for that, I'll just go ahead and use a calculator, and I'll get around, well, exactly negative 1664 over 3. So minus a negative means I add 1664 over 3. And so we'll get that value. And don't forget, we do have that constant or the weight density of 62.5. And so when I use a calculator and multiply, you should get around 34,667 pounds of force acting on the trapezoidal plate.